ஹே தேர் எவ்ரிபடி அண்ட் வெல்கம் பேக் டு த பார்ட் டூ ஆஃப் த சைக்காலஜி சீரீஸ் இன் த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் பார்ட் வி டிஸ்கஸ்ட் த பேசிக்ஸ் ஆஃப் சைக்காலஜி அண்ட் டூ மெயின் தியோரிஸ் கிவன் பை சிக்மன் ஃப்ரோய்ட் அண்ட் பை எரிக் எரிக்சன் இன் டுடேஸ் வீடியோ வில் பி டிஸ்கஸிங் டூ மோர் தியோரிஸ் கிவன் பை ஜோ பியஜெ அண்ட் இவான் பேவ்லாஃப் ஸ்டார்டிங் வித் த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் தியோரி ஆஃப் காக்னேட்டிவ் டெவலப்மெண்ட் given by Jean Piaget in 1952 now before we start everything what is cognition so cognition is basically the mental action or the process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought experience and the senses now cognition basically involves four main concepts in it which is known as the schema the assimilation the accommodation and the equilibrium now this may seem a little hard to grasp at the beginning but stay with me and you'll get it easily schema is basically knowledge and understanding now knowledge that helps us in understanding the world now the knowledge in this case is gained and later newer experiences modify the knowledge so in the case of a, of a kid if you show the kid a cat and uh, you point out to the kid and you say hey this is a cat the child registers it in his mind as something which has four legs and a tail so in that in that sense for the kid the object is a cat then in the stage of assimilation later if this child even sees a tiger the child is going to call the tiger a cat because again it has four legs and a tail but that's when you correct the child and say oh no that's not a cat that's a tiger so the child has two images now the child has segregated both of these in his head so when you informed the child about newer information the child is taking in the new information and ex- and uh, into the previously existing schema so that is assimilation accommodation is for the child to adjust to the new information that you have just given them now equilibrium is basically the balance between assimilation and accommodation so the individual basically naturally seeks uh, equilibrium nobody likes disequilibrium so disequilibrium is when uh, what the person thinks and what the environment is is different and that is very dissatisfying so the child tries to balance both of these it tries to balance the assimilation and the accommodation phase and that is known as the equilibrium so those are the four main concepts that are inculcated in the cognition that is schema assimilation accommodation and equilibrium now moving on to piaget's theory he divided basically his entire theory into two main periods he said that the child goes through these phases in the first is the sensory motor period now the sensory motor period lasts somewhere from 18 months to 2 years of age and then there is a period of conceptual intelligence which is 2 years and above that in the period of conceptual intelligence he divided that again into three main phases the pre operational period the period of concrete operation and the period of formal operation So let's start with the sensory motor stage. Now this lasts from as I said 18 months to 2 years and in this stage it is all about the exploration of the child. The child uses its skills, it looks, it tries to grasp, it listens and that is how it explores the entire environment. The child in this stage faces something known as object permanence. So usually what happens is the child assumes that if it's looking at a toy the toy will suddenly vanish as soon as the child closes its eyes but at this stage uh, piaget said that the child develops a sense of object permanence or object constancy they understand that an object exists even when they cannot be seen they also at this stage develop an attribute to animate objects so they animate doors furniture toys so if you've seen noticed a situations where if a child is running around and it gets hit by the door it gets very happy if an elder person or a guardian or the parent hits the door and says the door is a bad boy so the child suddenly feels a sense of happiness because for the child the door is an animated object so animation is a very key characteristic of the sensory motor phase now object permanence also teaches this child something known as existence of their own when the child learns that the objects are separate from them they have an existence of their own they are able to attach names and words to certain objects 
so that is the sensory motor period which is from 18 months to 2 years of age then we move on to the period of conceptual intelligence now this is 2 years and onwards and it as i said it includes the pre operational phase the concrete operational phase and the formal operational phase now the pre operational phase lasts from 2 years to 7 years now it is labeled as a transition period it can also be labeled as a no logic stage now at this stage the structure of ego that we studied in freud in the first part of the psychology series that plays a very important role the child tends to be egocentric and the child struggles to see the world from the perspective of other people they also struggle with the idea of constancy now the example that you can give in the pre operational phases suppose you give uh, you have a lump of clay you have a big lump of clay now you divide the big lump of clay into two equal halves and what you do is you flatten one half into a very thin pancake and the other half you just leave it into a ball shape now if you ask the child to choose which one the child will choose the one which is flat why because it appears larger so in the head of the child it he cannot register that both of the lumps are equal in size so there's no logic that the child uses in this it just observes and he, and tries to take actions accordingly so that was the pre operational phase then we move on to the concrete operational phase now this lasts from somewhere around 7 years to 11 years now children in this start uh, in this age group they start to think more logically they begin to understand the concept of conservation that maybe the flat clay and the lump of clay are equal another thing in the concrete operational phase is that the egocentrism that was there in the previous stage it slowly starts to disappear in this stage they begin to think about how other people may think and how other people may feel and they begin to realize that their thoughts are unique to them and that others may or may not share their thoughts and feelings or opinions and then is the age group of 12 years and above which is the formal operational now this stage is mainly governed by abstract thoughts this stage involves an increase in the logical thinking at this point they become more capable of uh, of trying to generate multiple potential solutions to problems now in this stage piaget focuses on a very important concept that the kids they don't just add more information and knowledge to the existing knowledge but it is a difference between the quantitative and the qualitative knowledge he said that there is a qualitative change in how kids think and at this stage they start thinking about philosophical ethical social moral political issues which require abstract reasoning so basically what he said that it's not that the child is observing things and he is just adding to the information that he has it actually tries to weigh everything it tries to modify its own thoughts so it's more of a qualitative thought process rather than a quantitative or an accumulative thought process and that concludes the cognitive developmental theory given by jean piaget moving on to the classical conditioning theory now this was given by ivan pavlov he was a russian psychologist and so how he defined classical conditioning is that the learning that results from association or pairing of two stimuli in the environment now ivan pavlov is known for a very famous experiment that he did by using a dog as a subject and he faced the dog in four different scenarios in the first scenario he presented food to the dog and the dog started to salivate in the second scenario the stimulation was just a bell and no response was generated in this scenario the bell was a neutral stimulus because there was no response stimulated by the dog in the third scenario the dog was presented with food after ringing the bell which generated a response of the dog salivating now in the fourth scenario the bell is the stimulus which generates salivation from the dog so the bell now is no longer a neutral stimulus but a conditioned stimulus and the response of the dog now becomes a conditioned response 
Now, when they talk about unconditioned and conditioned stimulus, what is the difference between the two? So, unconditioned means anything that is unlearned, it is untaught, and it exists previously in you. So, when they were giving the dog the food and the dog was salivating, that reaction was untaught and it existed already in the dog. But a conditioned stimulus is a previously present neutral stimulus, like like the bell. When the dog saw the bell for the first time, there was no salivation. But when they introduced Produced the bell along with the food it became a conditioned stimulus and later by just listening to the bell the dog started to salivate so now it has evoked a conditioned response now if we give the example of a dental operatory so when the child visits us for the first time everything is normal and the child is very happy there is no kind of negative response from the child but if something bad happens for example we give him an injection or there is some kind of pain that the child has gone through during that process suddenly the white coat that you're wearing the entire dental operatory all of that starts to scare the child and that is mentally imbibed in the child So later when the child visits us or visits any setup which resembles what he experienced previously, he starts to show that kind of an emotion and that kind of response is generated. So there are basically four different types of principles which are present in the classical conditioning. Now these are acquisition, generalization, discrimination and extension. So acquisition basically is learning any kind of new response after the conditioning. So you are acquiring a new response. Generalizing is the process of conditioning which is evoked after a stimulus. So suppose a child has uh, has had a very painful experience in a dental operatory and he remembers the white coat that you are wearing. So later, whenever he sees a white coat, as I said, he is going to start getting scared. He is going to remember what he faced last time and he is going to relate the same. So there is a generalization that the child is uh, going through. What happened before will definitely happen again. Then there is discrimination, which is the opposite of generalization. So in the example of that is suppose the child is visiting a place where there are no white coats suppose you're wearing a colorful scrub or suppose the entire dental operatory system is a little different a little more colorful suppose this time the dent the child does not need an injection and the entire procedure is very uh, pain free then the child starts to discriminate there is no generalization now so he knows that there is another option that does exist he starts to discriminate An extinction is the removal of the conditioned behavior. So now that the child knows that this operatory is not as scary as what he experienced for the first time, the fear that is imbibed in the child is completely going to be removed. So that is extinction. So that brings us to the end of yet another video where we learn two more theories by Jean Piaget and Ivan Pavlov. The Cognitive Development Theory and the Classical Conditioning Theory. I hope you liked the video. If you did, Please hit the like button, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. Bye-bye.